Janet, Miss Jackson If You're Nasty, is well known for her catchy songs, crisp dance moves, and being part of one of the most famous families in the world. But throughout the years, one thing that's rarely been on display are the men in her life. And I don't mean her brothers. Janet's done a pretty good job of maintaining a private life, especially when it comes to relationships. But in this video, we're going to break down some of her hookups that have gone public and some no one knew about. By the age of 18, Janet Demita Joe Jackson had already released two studio albums and appeared on three popular TV shows. She was also two years into her first serious relationship with a member of another musically gifted family. Janet met James DeBarge when his group, DeBarge, made its debut on Soul Train, while Janet was there with her sister, LaToya, and brother Jermaine. Janet, it's been said, found James to be a nice, sweet guy. Even though it wasn't easy, the couple would sneak around to see each other as much as possible. They ended up taking their relationship to the ultimate level when they eloped in September 1984. Other than the exception of getting a blessing from LaToya, Janet kept her plans hidden from the rest of her family. She would later reveal that the impetuous decision was an attempt to take control of her life from her father, as she relayed in her 2022 Lifetime in A&E documentary. I wanted to be able to stand on my own feet, and at that time, I thought that there was no other way I would be able to kind of get my own life, unless I got married. Any wedded bliss the couple shared, though, turned out to be short-lived. After they eloped to Grand Rapids, Michigan, where they were married by James' uncle, the groom left his bride alone on their wedding night. He said, okay, I'll be right back, and I'm sitting in a hotel room in Grand Rapids, Michigan by myself, just 18, and for three hours, he never came back. I don't know, maybe it's this person in me that wants to help people. Subconsciously, when it comes to relationships, somehow, I'm attracted to people that use drugs. James's drug abuse would continue to cause problems throughout their marriage. There are a lot of nights that I would go searching the streets looking for him, 8 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. I remember times when I would find the pills and I would take them and try to flush them down the toilet and we would be rolling around on the floor fighting for them. Once Janet had finally had enough, she sought an annulment in 1985. In 2016, Entertainment Tonight reported that while appearing on the reality show Growing Up Hip Hop, James claimed that he and Janet had a secret daughter. A woman had also come forward asserting to be said daughter. James and the woman later took a paternity test that proved they weren't related after all. Janet herself addressed the rumors in her doc, saying she would never keep a child away from their father. She rationalized that she thought the rumors came from weight gain she was experiencing from taking birth control pills. At the time, Janet had a recurring role in the hit TV series, Fame, which gave fans the perfect opportunity to pay extra attention to her physical appearance on a regular basis. The tabloids even suggested that Janet's sister, Reeby, was raising the child, or even that Janet's adopted niece was really her own child. Janet would begin another serious relationship in the late 80s that would also lead her down the aisle when she began dating Mexican dancer, songwriter, and director Rene Elizondo Jr. There are conflicting reports of how the two actually met, since some say it happened while he was working on a film and a mutual friend invited him over to meet her. Others say they met when he was a backup dancer for her sister LaToya. Regardless of how they connected, he turned out to be exactly what she needed at the time. I needed to just be free of being with somebody that did drugs and all of that. I needed a lift. Renee was funny, just always had fun together. He was very, very charming. He became Janet's creative collaborator and worked with her extensively during the height of her career. He made an appearance in the music video for her hit, Come Back To Me, off her 1989 album, Rhythm Nation, directed several of her other music videos, including That's The Way Love Goes, and again, from her 1993 album, Janet, and wrote on her 1997 album, The Velvet Rope. He was also the faceless male model standing behind Janet while using his hands to cover her breasts during her risky 1993 Rolling Stone cover shoot. In 1991, they secretly married. Not only was the wedding a secret, but so was the entire marriage. In fact, the public wasn't brought up to speed about their union until their split was announced nine years later. Renee then filed a lawsuit against Janet seeking damages of $10 million, claiming she broke a promise to divide property acquired before their marriage, as well as equally share any assets acquired after their relationship began in 1987. Although Janet initially fought the lawsuit and tried to get the courts to uphold their prenuptial agreement, Renee claimed to have signed it under duress. Ultimately, she did settle with him for the amount requested. Before Janet embarked on her next long-term relationship, 
a platonic blast from the past, came back to enter into Janet's love life once her and Renee were done in the form of a Tribe Called Quest member, Q-Tip. They first met while filming the 1993 movie Poetic Justice and joined forces once more for her 1997 hit, Got Till It's Gone. They began dating shortly after for an unspecified amount of time. Janet also had a one-off with Matthew McConaughey in 2002 after they presented an award together at the 44th Grammy Awards and sparks flew backstage as they posed for pictures together. And by one-off, I mean that they went out to dinner one time, one night. That same year, Janet started a relationship with record producer, songwriter, and rapper Jermaine Dupree. They met while backstage at one of her concerts. He felt Janet had a certain energy about her, which motivated him to want to get to know her more. When he learned she didn't own a two-way pager, he took action and sent her one so they could communicate. Throughout the several years that they would end up spending together, Janet gushed about how amazing he was. In 2006, while she was doing a sit-down interview for The Oprah Winfrey Show, with Jermaine sitting in the audience, she expressed that she thanks God on a regular basis for having him in her life. Jermaine and I have been seeing each other for five years, and I feel his unconditional love. I love everything about him. He's just real, very real, and very loving. I'm truly happy. Also that year, Janet appeared on The Tyra Banks Show and surprisingly delved into their Between the Sheets experiences by telling viewers, So on a scale to 10, 1 to 10, how is Jermaine in bed? <laughs> he's, he's, he's off the, off the charts. He's off the charts. After much time had passed, Janet and Jermaine's relationship started to take a hit when he wasn't willing to take their romance to the next level. You see, Jermaine had no interest in getting married. His apprehension to making the lifelong commitment was just one factor as to why their relationship started to fall apart. Another reason was that the couple never lived together throughout the period they were romantically involved. In Janet's 2022 documentary, even more was revealed about what went on behind closed doors in their relationship. Jermaine, who was featured, claimed that by dating Janet, he was able to attract other women and confessed to being unfaithful to her. Ultimately, they parted ways in 2009. After splitting from Jermaine, Janet met Qatari billionaire businessman Wassam Almana in the spring of 2010 at a hotel opening in Dubai. The two had a whirlwind relationship that led to major changes in Janet's life, including a move to London and abandoning her famously sexy style for extremely conservative garb in line with her new booze Muslim religion. The couple became engaged and married privately in 2012. Janet waited until the following year to inform fans of their nuptials, noting on her website that it was quiet, private, and a beautiful ceremony. On January 3rd, 2017, Janet gave birth to their son. Three months later, though, it would be announced that the couple had separated and were pursuing a divorce. News outlets pinned the reason on the couple not seeing eye to eye on many things, including religious beliefs, cultural differences, and backgrounds. Janet's brother Randy shocked everyone when he told People magazine that his sister was also verbally abused during her marriage to Wasam. According to the New York Post, Janet and Wasam had an ironclad prenuptial agreement entitling her to a hefty payout. Under their agreed upon terms, she would receive $100 million if they remained married for five years and another $100 million if they had a child. It's unknown the exact amount that Janet ended up receiving. Then a custody battle ensued over their son. Initially, both parties wanted to have equal time. However, things changed and Janet decided to pursue full custody. She felt very anxious about leaving the child with his father due to his history of verbal abuse and control that she'd faced in her relationship. In 2018, her concern was so consuming that she reportedly called the cops on Wasam during one of his visits with the child. A major point of contention was the two being on complete opposite ends of the spectrum when it came to raising their son. Since they've both been very private about the matter, it's unclear which route they decided to take. In 2020, a photograph of Janet and LA Laker legend Magic Johnson from the 1983 American Music Awards made the rounds on the internet. In one pic, Magic was seen wrapping his arms around Janet, while in the other, they were seen locking lips. At the time, she was only 16 years old, while he was 24. Prior to these images leaking, neither had ever talked about being an item, 
and very well may have just been good friends. Neither addressed the situation after the pictures resurfaced. On People's People in the 90s podcast in 2021, Bill Bellamy got into whether or not he actually dated Janet back in the 90s. He admitted that there was an attraction, but things never panned out between them. This is Janet Jackson, my sweetheart over here. These are her dancers. They are all that. And listen, only on MTV Jams can this be done. Peace. For three decades, another relationship Janet had was kept quite hush-hush. And it happened to be with a previously proclaimed king of R&B. Let's give it up to the R&B king, Mr. Bobby Brown. You better lay low. In 2016, though, while promoting his memoir, Every Little Step, Bobby Brown finally opened up about their romance. Bobby instantly developed an admiration for her after watching Janet play Penny Gordon Woods on the 70s sitcom Good Times. By the mid 80s, the pair would begin secretly dating. Throughout their time together, she never acknowledged Bobby in public. In his book, Bobby said he soon learned that Janet wasn't interested in being his girlfriend and informed him that she wasn't in love with him, but loved him as a person. He also claimed she told him her father would disapprove of them being together because he didn't want her to be with a black man. After Bobby heard that, he exploded and kicked her out of his hotel room while they were laying in bed after being intimate. He also touched on their relationship in his 2018 BET series, The Bobby Brown Story, and his 2022 A&E documentary, Biography Bobby Brown. After breaking things off with Wassam, it appears that Janet has been single ever since, and that her primary focuses these days is herself and her son. <laughs>